Welcome to Hidden Hustle with Jamie and Greg. Uh, we're here on Irish Sports Daily's uh, YouTube channel, another live show. Um, you know, got really good response from the last live show. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. This one's kind of be kind of a mix of kind of what we've done with some of the recorded shows, uh, with some of the video stuff. Uh, I know we did some breakdown stuff of, we did Peyton Bowen, we did uh, one of... Uh, the fiesta bowl and kind of the problems on defense and that yeah. and this one um we're gonna get into tyler buckner so uh before we kind of get into it um just what are your what were your thoughts overall thoughts great on tyler buckner first year what were your thoughts on him as a recruit and kind of just lay it all out there of like what you kind of see in him as a player yeah so i think just i guess take it all the way back to the spring when he got in the spring game and i think that when everybody saw what he could do in the spring the way that he threw the ball the way that he ran the ball they took the red jersey off so we got to see him running i think there was a ton of excitement there where he he led the touchdown drives and everyone kind of thought okay like we got something right and the the, the hype started to build then and died down a little bit um especially we got into fall practice and then the first game against Florida State where Jack Cohn looked really good um, throwing the ball, especially. So it, it, you know, OK, Buckner will be for later. And then Toledo happens. And and I think the speculation immediately was this is the quarterback, right? This is our yeah. guy. And, and I feel like it's interesting because there were I want to say from the spring to Toledo to you know, the, the first half and into the second half against Virginia Tech there were so many moments where you felt like, okay, it's his job. He's got it. And it never actually happened. I'm I, it's like looking back on it. It's so surprising that he never actually started a game. Yeah. Especially like he didn't against, start that people. You would think back, you'd look at the Virginia Tech game. Yeah. He started and, I, that game. and I think like people forget that he's never actually prepared He's never gotten starter reps. He's never – He's. I, I want to know if he's even gotten backup reps. He's gotten package reps. So he's running his base package, and that's what he's gotten, and that's what he's been working on. But the amount of reps he's gotten, he's never been the guy. He's never gone into a game as the starter. And looking back, like I said, it's pretty surprising that that was the case. Um, but I feel like he showed us enough to where you can project – what he's going to look like going forward and how that's going to, you know, go in 2022. We got a lot of good film on him. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny that Virginia tech game, I think if he would have, um, you know, one have been healthy and stayed in and didn't get out at that time and they would have can't come back and won that game. I think that's it. It's, it's his, his job, job. Yeah. the rest of the year. But then as it turned out, I mean, you got to hand it to Jack Cohen. He came in, it was lights out. And really was um, pretty close to lights out the rest of the year. You yeah. know, like was playing outstanding. Um, just the best ball that that we had seen from him, like took it up a level. Um, you know, basically played at that Florida State level in that first game. And then, I mean, it didn't happen again until those final drives against um, Virginia Tech, but he carried it on uh, the rest of the year. And I think with Buckner, I think everyone was always so excited about him. You know, it's obviously a sham of what happened with California in, in the football season for right. his senior year. You know, it got moved to the spring, so he didn't get a senior year. He had only played um, for, I think most people know this, but just in, in case people who are watching that are, are unaware, you know, played as a freshman where he was kind of like a little bit of quarterback, played receiver, um, you know, sophomore season, tears his knee. Right. So yeah. misses that misses that season. He had already, but he had gone to camps and press people already had an incredible offer list junior year, just phenomenal year, like ridiculous numbers. Um, one of the best years you'll ever see just to, if the totality of his tape and what he did and the highlights are just sick, like they're ridiculous, right? Some of the throws he makes, some of the runs he makes, and then he didn't get a senior year. So he didn't get a senior year. He would have, it, I think it would have greatly benefited him, which is why I was kind of thought that maybe it was a better idea for him to 
stay and not enroll early. But I, I totally understand why he, he did. Um, you know, and I think probably ultimately it will benefit him and the team. Yeah. And, you know, had a good spring. Had a good spring. Did some good stuff. Um, obviously, uh, you know, there was that one throw, that kind of like viral throw in the spring where he's rolling to his left, squares his shoulders, and and, and throw that one to the sideline. I think, believe it's Matt Salerno. Um you know, he has those kind of highlight throws like that. And um, I think what's really um, impressive about, you know, him is that you saw a lot of uh, the running ability. And I think he he had like the seventh highest um, yards per carry out of anybody, not running backs, running backs, uh, quarterbacks, whatever, out of anybody in college football last year. I don't I'm not sure if a lot of people know that obviously show what a dangerous runner he is. Yeah. And I think he's got obviously a lot of room to grow as a passer, but you saw this year too. Uh, and, you know, we'll sh show in a second when you're going to bring it up. He did a lot of great things as a passer as well. And there's a lot of things that they can build off of um, what he can do and, and the RPO game and all of that as well. Yeah. And so, you know, it, the, 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 a big part of what, um, kind of the discussion around Buckner was the time that he missed and what he would be able to do. And I think that given the spring and that he was there, the, the short amount of time that he was there, I think when you can, when you factor in that just he hasn't gotten a lot of snaps and he didn't get a lot of snaps coming in. So I think when you look at it in totality, when you look at the fact that there were three people splitting reps the whole time, then what he was able to come in and do is just kind of scratching the surface. So, um, you know, but like we said before, like there's so much that he actually showed and where the offense can go. And I am like very, very like encouraged by where the offense can go because of his skill set, because of what he did um, in high school. Yeah. So so that just kind of um, it, it just like it's very exciting to think about when they can do so much out of so many formations and they can put the defense in such bad positions to where you're always constantly thinking about his legs and his versatility. And then he has the arm to, you know, make throws where you feel like, you know, there's not a lot of space there. Right. And we'll show you with the Toledo game where, you know, throws a sidearm, he's growing to his left and he throws a dime to Chris Tyree. Like that play is it's taken for granted because of the, you know, he's standing by himself, but it was not an easy throw and he was able to make it. Not a lot of guys can make that throw. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right. So bring up bring up uh, the first uh, clip here. Um, and this is North Carolina. And, you know, it's a called run, obviously. Um, it, it, it's it's an RPO, right? So the run pass option play. Um, just look how they're aligned. And it's a read here. He's reading that uh, that that linebacker who's out there inside shade of Avery Davis, right? And when he sees that, all he, like, he just has to read, if that guy's coming in and, and playing the run, immediately that's a throw out and he throws the bubble and that's why it's wide open. And this was, it wasn't a called play, right? Like, it wasn't a called play. It wasn't called to throw the bubble. He, like, did that on the fly. And that is also... I mean, it's built into the play, but it's not like that's not the original call. So that's what makes this throw so impressive, even though it's like, you know, it's a nice, easy throw, just like a pitch right. and catch. But that's what makes it so impressive. Right. So let's run it here. So you see 17 linebacker. Right. So as he, soon as he sees him creeping in. Yeah. That's it. It's right there. It's done. Right. So and, and the thing, too, like, look at the look at how. So he. You can see if if you go to the other replay, um, which I don't have, you can see it. But he's peeking at him right now. Yeah. So the, the alternative here is to run quarterback counter. It's quarterback counter, yeah. Right, right. So he's going to come in here, but he's peeking at him. And so you have this action out here, and this guy is going to start shuffling his feet inside. And it's a quick flip of the hips. And it all happens so quickly. Like he is out ready to throw and this linebacker is still in the bad position. Now he's dead. He's done. He has he's in no man's go. land. It's, it's yeah, over. He, he can't make any play. 
and Buckner is able to get it out. And I, and I want to highlight too, it's a good throw yes. where he gets Davis moving forward. He doesn't like if he throws it behind him back here or something like that, um, it can affect the play to where maybe 17 does have time to get there. And maybe he like, you know, there's like a bobble or something and the whole thing gets messed up, but it doesn't, he leads him forward and it's straight up inside and you know, it's a touchdown. Yeah. Right? Easy, and it's easy a walk in. Yeah. yeah. Easy walk in. All right. And this is that Virginia tech game. And this was, you know, uh, a point in the game. I believe this was the two minute drill. So it's right before. Yeah. Yeah. The it's half, right before right? halftime. Yeah. And you know, it's not like he's under pressure. It's not like a tough throw in terms of, you know, what he's seeing or anything like that, but it's exactly where it needs to be. It's a throw on the money. They're taking advantage of Avery Davis on a safety and it's just perfect in stride. Exactly what you want to see from him. Top of his drop sees there, just right there. And he hits it. And I don't want to highlight again, how comfortable Buckner is going through like progressions. So like he's looking left at Austin here. He's still looking left. He's still looking left, snaps his head, sets his feet and throws it. So he's not even, it's not, it's one of those things where you would expect a young player to stare down the route, but he doesn't do that. He looks off, hits the player. He, he looks off, Looks the the he gets the the players moving around and he hits Davis perfectly. Davis is a step away from taking it to the house. Yeah, and here's that that play and you know what? It's a beautifully designed play by Tommy Reese. Right. This is play. the one against Toledo. This is the one against Toledo. It's beautifully designed. Uh huh. You know, obviously there's there's the run fake with Kyron. You know and. Tyree, that's Tyree coming in motion. We know he's going to throw. He's going to come in motion and run the wheel. Completely uncovered, right? And and mm -hmm. in the middle of field too, that's George Tackett's, you know, running right a dig there. He's wide open too. Multiple so, options. And the reason why Tyree is wide open is because they called, uh, you know, the, the boundary. They brought the, the, the corner on a boundary corner. blitz, right? Mm -hmm. And... That is something because they're thinking they've seen it already in the game. Buckner, it, it's it's a run most of the mm -hmm. time. They're yeah. they're thinking that they're going to catch either if Buckner keeps, that's it. They're gonna they're gonna blow that up. They're ob obviously you see that guy who's got um, uh, Mayor leaking out too. Right. So they think they have this play, you yeah. know, right there. They think this is the right call, and it still could have been the right call because you know Buckner could have like froze. He could have whatever like. He's he got a player to, in his face. Got a player right in his face. And, you know, you're playing it. You're seeing adjust the arm angle, and it's on the money. Like, and, and, and Here's the thing. So if he throws it over the top, the corner will just knock it down. Yeah. But he throws it around him, and it's right to Tyree. And we're off to the races. In stride, and then it's gone. And then you see, obviously, Tactics, who was <laughs> wide open as well. He's he's right there running with him as well. Right. Um. And this is the kind of thing that these throws, he only dropped back 38 times right? last year. So you didn't see a lot from him. You didn't see an, an, enough of him as a passer, obviously. he's And that was on purpose. They're, they're obviously running the ball. It, there's a purpose to him. And there's a lot of the package stuff is run. They couldn't run the ball, especially first half of the season, uh, without him, basically, right. in the game, right? So that's why he's brought in. So... That those kind of throws, you're going to see a lot more of them. You're going to see a lot more of them, um, where because he can do these kind of things that even like Ian Book, who was a great athlete, he didn't make throws like that. You know, he had a little pitch thing against yeah, North yeah, yeah. Carolina, but there's not a lot of th things like that. Not a place where he's changing arm angles, throwing off platform, and delivering dimes like that. And and Buckner has that capability. Right. And, and it's one of those things where, so this is, we had talked in an earlier one about, you know, in the Lorenzo styles um, breakdown about a throw that Jack Cohn made that, that Tyler Buckner needs to make. Well, this is a play that Jack Cohn, that's not in their playbook. Jack Cohn is not making that play. He's not rolling left and throwing 
and throwing across his body with on like a sidearm like that. That's not a play that he's going to make. That's a play that Tyler Buckner can make. And that is a play, basically, it's a 55-yard touchdown born off of just a multiple option play where it could be a run, it could be a, a, a pass like that to Tyree, or it can be a little over-the-middle pass to um, to Tactics or Mayer, or, or Buckner can just run it himself. And, like, that's his mobility, his legs. Like, it's all created off of, what his skill set is and that is the advantage of tyler buckner to where you can have just a simple play like that and it puts the defense in such a a bind where we don't know we can we can cover three things and they can get us on one of these things and the one thing that that they get us on is the one that goes to the house and now we're not playing defense anymore yeah so all right, let's run this one. And he could have dumped that to Mayor there, as you yeah. kind of see Mayor leaking out. And it's a first down if he does, right? It's a first down. And Mayor's going to turn it up, you know, get the first down, right? But he sees Lindsay to throw this on the run. And obviously, this was a PI. Right. Yeah. It was, they called it too. It wasn't right. just one of those Notre Dame ones where it wasn't a call. It wasn't a call. They called it as well. Do you want to see them kind of put it in front a little bit more? Sure. You know, sure. But still, this is an incredibly tough throw. And those kind of throws are going to be there, just similar to, you know, him going to the other side and throwing that one to Tyree. Uh, because, you know, to even have the confidence to make this throw as a freshman is like pretty remarkable. And I think, um, you know, he's kind of got that. I, I think people, because think he's quiet and reserved a little bit yeah. and I'm, you know, he is to a point, but he's got this a little bit of a swagger and he's got a belief in himself too. And so I think you're going to see a lot more of these kind of throws. And right. that's why, I mean, that, that's, I mean, if that doesn't excite you to watch that kind of thing, I, I don't know what to tell you. Right. And and it's and it's again, it's just one of those multiple options, right? Where you have the 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 run, like just the run option itself, where it's 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 a it's a he could just give it to Diggs right here, right? And Diggs can get inside of this corner. Like that could work too, where he gets upfield, but he doesn't have to do that because of the advantage he sees out here, right? He's out in space now. And so, like you said, he can throw to Mayer. He's got tactics right here. But he says, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this, uh, this go to Lindsey. And he doesn't get it out as far as he could. Um, but it's just, again, the defense has to worry about so many things on just a little simple play like this. And it's like there isn't – you could run this play four times in a row and do something different with it yeah. every single time. And so that's the thing where it's like when we talk about where when we watched Oklahoma State, right? And Oklahoma State did the, um, did the, you know, they're going fast and they're getting on the ball. And it's like they're hitting us with a different thing. But what Notre Dame can do is with a guy like Tyler Buckner is you can go fast with him because you have so many options on one, one type of play you're never you're always hurting the defense in some kind of way so you, oh we, we ran the goal this time all right we got we got to prepare for that oh then he, he's going to hit mayor out here okay then we got to get that and then he hits tactics out here so again that's just like the skill set of what he can uh what he can do and here's a the a clip from the blue goal game of him in shotgun and again like surveying the defense right so he yeah. goes play action, looking left, flips his hips right over the middle. It's a dime. This this was a seed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kind of, um, you know, this is his arm probably didn't get enough um, love because people didn't really see it right. enough this year. Um, although we're kind of kind of show one like good throw, but not a great decision in, in the right. bad clips that we'll get into. But yeah, this is the kind of thing, like, obviously, I mean, it's not like this is a super tight window. It's a wide open window 
Um, but it's the it's you know obviously it's the the arm, the arm right. talent, and that's what you're looking at, right? And like and you it's said, the, it's the decisiveness look, too. It's decisive, exactly. And I think there's like the other angle of this too. Yeah, that if you see the you know the end zone angle, you can definitely see him like look off, boom, 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 like let it go. Right, and, and this then, is the the last one against Toledo where you see again the multiple ways a simple play can really gash the defense. You see, we got Tyree in motion. He's going to pull the linebacker away from the from the box, right? So if they want to run it, now you've taken a player out of the box here, right? But he pulls it, and now this player is again in a bind because yeah. Buckner is a threat to run now. He has to make a decision on he Buckner has to make a decision. or Tyree. He's made his decision. Buckner sees it. And then this throw on the run is a very, very hard throw. Right. Like a very, very hard throw. And he puts it in front of Tyree. And you'll see here that he bobbles it a little bit. And, I mean, he still comes up with a catch. But, I mean, and it's a little bit far in front. But still, like that is an incredibly tough throw. I think I think Tyree too, like he needs to do a better job of moving forward too. Because like he's kind of he, Yeah, yeah. He didn't, the way he here. ran this. This bubble, like, he's way yeah, too move back. Move forward a little bit. Move he's forward. way too back. Uh, and I'm sure that's something that uh, right. Lance Taylor probably went over with him. On but it's like but. the execution's bad. Nine yard gain. Yeah, I know. I know. Incredible, right? And like, so, so here you have, you have a so these corners, right? Everyone is in a bind. The safety is in a bind. This player is in a bind. All these players are dealing with the run play. Everyone is stressed because this player, he has to stay with Lindsey. He cannot leave him because we saw the play before. He's obviously willing. If you let him go, he's willing just to just chuck it. And the same thing with Davis. Davis is heading up the field here. He ha This player sees all of this going on, and he knows this is all very like dangerous, right? But he has to stay with Davis because he will throw it to him. And now there's just open space here. If this play isn't bobbled, it's a huge play. Yeah. It's a huge play. And that is the, you know, that's that's what Buckner does, right? Like that's yeah. the 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 problems that he presents for um for the defense. Yeah. Um, and obviously, like, you know, you see some of these exciting things. We're gonna go into some of the things that you know he needs to work on and where he's not quite there yet. And which is it's going to make the difference between him being the starter this year and a guy who can help take the offense to a different level. Right. Or if, you know, he's a guy who's got one elite skill set and it's running and that's it. Like, and I mean, we know he can run and we know he's capable of doing these things, but there's got to be some of these mistakes. And obviously, like you said, he didn't get starter reps. He only dropped back 38 times. He didn't play a senior season of football so he's got a lot of room to grow there and you know we'll show examples of it well let's um this is loading up so let, let me uh oh here we go good all right let me just uh pull this up oops i said it was loading but um it came up real quick this sure all right here we go Okay, this one, obviously, Virginia Tech game, we know that, like, everything was going great for him early. Not as great later on, right? Not as great later on. And we see this one, you know, see you see to the boundary, you know. So this is the – yo, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, so this is the third and uh, – the initial third and four play. So what you're going to see is you're going to see Colsey come up and he's going to do the out. And then you're going to see basically Davis hides behind um, hides behind tactics here because Mayor wasn't in this game. And this is one of Notre Dame's favorite plays um, in a third and short situation where they'd run a little option route, yep. right? So he gets the snap, he gets behind, and he, you know, this isn't terrible, right? Like he's open, and if he sticks him in the chest, it's going to be a completion. Yeah. And it's a little bit outside, though, right? So the, the yeah, it wasn't, the, a, it wasn't a good throw. The communication there is isn't there, and that's another thing, like where we talked about the, um, where we talk about the, the the lack of reps. You know, he's not getting a ton of reps with Avery Davis, right? He's not getting a ton of reps with the starters. Um, he's getting you know package reps, right? And so that's where this pays dividends. 
but as we show later in the game in the next clip so this is the pick six right yes same exact situation where and that have... time i'm sorry it no, started to but the, the last time was you know five man pressure i'm sure right, that so was, that had the safety yeah i'm sure that had a lot to do with maybe him rushing his mechanics why the throw was off this one they're only rushing four they're not showing so it's not like you know, there's not a lot of worry worry about here. Right. You know what you're getting. This is him making a pre-snap decision that's obviously a bad one. You know, right. like a, a really bad one. It's bad location on the throw. And you know, in this situation too, well, play let play it, play it, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. So everybody remembers this. You know, the corner's just kind of trapping them there. Yeah. Sitting on that. It's there. I mean, colsey has got no chance. There's no that corner's got outside leverage. And he's sitting on the out, and Colsey knows he has to run an out, but it's like, I, I don't want to yeah. run to the, I don't want to run to being covered. So I'm going to quick hook turn, and then it ends up in the, uh, you know, it, the DB throws it right yeah. to him. And maybe if this is Kevin Austin, he knows that he's not going to get open, but he knows that I have to get to this spot, and then ends up being just an incomplete. Right. Right. So maybe that is, is part of it. Right. But, I think the key here is that he basically decided right before the snap, I'm throwing this. This is going to be there without – he didn't read any coverage. Right. This is a mistake. And that's the thing there, you know, right there, stack release. Not often you see stack release where both guys are open. Right. Where both guys are open. And, I mean, it, it was right there for him, right? Yeah. So, right away – you know, he's got to see that corner sitting and he's got to go to, he's got to get off it to his next read for him. Yeah. And I would say even in this play too, and it's one thing about Buckner. And I think he's probably just so worried about getting into the offense and doing exactly as he's supposed to do and all that, mm -hmm. where you never saw him scramble really. He yeah. didn't really do it. And this is a case where, and you don't want someone to, obviously when you have guys open, you want them to throw to the open guys. Right. Right. But at the same time, like, look at how wide open the middle is here. Yeah. He's, he could just run that right there and mm -hmm. take it. And I'm not saying that, you know, he should do that all the time, you know, and, and I think that was one of the weaknesses of Ian Book was he was often, one read's not there, completely miss those other guys and then just run, right? And you don't want that all the time. At the same time, he's a pretty dangerous runner and sometimes you take it. So, he had a couple different options that he could have taken on this and he didn't. Right. So, right. yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I always wonder in this situation where if, if the first incompletion caused, it's like, well, I went to the stack, I went to the stack release the first time and it didn't work yeah. out. Let me come to, let me come to the other side, pre-snap. That's what I'm going to do. And you don't, you got to read out, every single play as if it's a new thing right because yeah. just because you did it didn't work one time doesn't mean it working again these two are wide open um and the other part of this is you know i noticed it before it's it's one of those things like it you know maybe in the moment he was just very frustrated you, you got to go after this pass you gotta yeah that's not <laughs> you're gonna get chewed in film for that you know yeah obviously you're mad but you gotta you gotta you gotta make an effort there yeah um, okay, which one of this this, this is North is a, Carolina? Yeah, this is a four verts concept here yeah. where they're going to um you should get four verticals, you have a single high safety, so you this looks like cover one across with a single high, you got a blitzing linebacker. So he's gonna be basically a spy in the middle, man, 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 single high. And the read is fine. The read right? is fine, yes. The read yeah, is the fine. Read on is this. Good. You you go to the short side. Mayer takes inside release, so he takes this player out of the play and he occupies the safety. The safety's never getting there. Don't mind this, but this is just kind of an inexplicable throw where it it has no chance to get there. It basically throws a grounder, and you just kind of look at the the. You got to give your guy a shot. Is basically yeah. you know what it comes down to, and you could look at the if you just saw this clip in, in this still, you'd think. Oh, why don't you throw it to Mayor? Mayor's gonna be well. The safety's over the top. It's just the safety's so there. You're thinking, yeah, that. the safety's over yeah. the top there. 
Yeah, he's um, sitting right there. It's not going to be yeah, completed. Yeah, this should be a touchdown. It, should it be needs a to be a touchdown. I mean, at least to be it needs to be somewhere where he can catch it. And it ends up yeah. being a, a pass interference, which I thought was a weak call. But it's like the ball bounces. It's like you have to get it here. And, you know, it's a big play in the game because, you know, it's 41-34. You can go up 48-34 at that point, and then it ends it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and but they ended up having to settle for a field goal on the drive. And it's like that's the sort of thing where you have to take advantage of of the points that are on the field available to you. And this is why too, when people are like, man, I want to see more Buckner. I want to see the, this is why you didn't see more Buckner because right. if he makes this throw, I mean, I guarantee you like that changes the outlook for the next game and then so on and so forth. Right. So you got to take the ones that are there and, and guys are going to make freshman mistakes, but this was, you know, just a bad throw. Yeah. It's just a bad throw. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the one you were talking about. Yeah. And you know what? And this is actually a great throw. It is actually yeah. a great throw. It's a great catch. It's just thrown to the wrong guy. Right. right? And, uh, okay, so we'll play it. And it's going to Mare. And you see mm -hmm. Mare, you know, um, gets over top of the linebacker. It's a tight window. Right? Safety's right there. That's a good throw. It's a really it's a good great throw. throw. Yes. It's a really, really impressive throw. But, I mean, you had Braden Lindsay. Right. And that's the play, too, where you're looking at. Yeah, that could have been, if the throw wasn't so great, and if Michael Mayer is not a stud, that could be a pick. The or, ball could get tipped in the air, and it could be intercepted it could be or something like that. A, like, lights out for Mayer. Like, there's a lot of things that can go wrong there. And it went right, and it was a great throw, and you're like, wow, that's impressive. And you know, I you know at the time you're thinking, wow, that's a great play, but in reality, that wasn't the one. That wasn't the the throw he should have made. Right. So you have the two safeties sitting in the middle of the field, and this safety. So it the alignment makes me think either robber and 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 like cover three basically. Yeah. Or or cover four where they're both you know everyone has a quarter, but this safety is not on this hash even. So you're thinking, okay, you 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 might have these two players, and they're both on go routes. As soon as the corner sits and moves inside, it's automatic. That's automatic. There's no one out here, right? And as soon as he does this, it's automatic. Got to go to Lindsay. Runs right by him. No one is out here. <laughs> There's yeah. no one behind. It's it's a it's it's you're running against air basically. Yeah, it's a touchdown. And it's after this play, and we know it's a mistake because after this play, they immediately pulled him out of the game. Yeah. And you see Brian Kelly talking to him and yeah. saying, like, hey, and, they know that, like, like, and he's got to be able to see that. And he's yeah. got to be able to read the coverage and know that. And they had the they had the right call. They had right. the right call. He threw the wrong play. It was a good throw, but it was the wrong play. Right. Yeah. And you know, and so you see kind of like these areas where obviously he needs to improve, and he was not good throwing on third down when asked to throw on third down. I mean, but how many of those reps is he actually getting in practice where right. he's having to face that kind of pressure? I would say probably very minimal, like less than a handful a week, you know, that he would get maybe zero on a week because he's coming in and he's running his package. Right. And he's not really doing that. And so, you know, he's got to be able to grow and that's what this springs about. Right is seeing if he has that growth. And if he does have that growth, then he's going to be the starting quarterback and he's going to be really, really good because you see all the other stuff that you can do with that package that they ran from this year. And really you might think, well, that's just a package. That's whatever. It's not like he was a straight up wildcat quarterback. Mm -hmm. They did a lot of really cool stuff with that, uh, with the RPOs and some of the stuff that, that they did. And, you can build an offense with that as a kind of foundation. And mm -hmm. I think one thing that Tommy Reese has done a really, really great job of is adapting to his talent and changing and doing all this stuff. Like, like, like this year's offense for Notre Dame was drastically different than the previous year. And it's because the strengths of the team were different. The, right. the offensive line was weaker. They didn't have Tommy Tremble. Huge difference. Um, you know, 
they changed how they were, they were like a 12 and 13 team, right? So one back, two tight end, one back, three tight end. That's who they kind of were. And then they played three tight ends, like, like, you know, Brock Wright, Tommy Tremble, uh, Michael Mayer. Those guys played a ton, right? So this year, it's pretty much all Mayer. Tactics played a little, you know, obviously they played a decent amount of 12, but they're primary in 11 team. And they'll probably be a little bit more 12 this year based on some of the stuff with um, the, the, you know, one some of the stuff that they uh, showed with the running and what they're doing right now with the receiver position, but you can do a whole variety of different things with it and how mm. you're going to do it. And one thing that I'm really interested in is I think so with Jack Cohn this year, they ran more play action to the end of the year. They were 29% play action with him throughout the whole season. They're like 39% with Buckner. And some of that it's like, you know, package stuff, but like, that's what I kind of think they're going to be. I think they're going to be around 40% play action. They were 22% in uh, in 2020 with Ian Book, right? Mm-hmm. And I think me and you have talked about this, you know, privately, not on a on a on one of these, but they needed to run a lot more play action yeah. and a lot more RPO stuff. And he's already shown that he can make the right reads, be smart about it. He Obviously, because that's the kind of offense that he ran in high school. And... That suits him. I think it's going to suit the personnel, right? The offensive line is going to be better. And I think the offense, if he is able to grow as a passer and do some of the stuff drop back wise that he hasn't really shown yet, man, then I, I think the sky's the limit for the offense um, and what they can do. Right. And and because you think about his ability as a runner is – that that allows them to basically spread out teams and have Michael Mayer on the field. So if you go empty, right? So let's say you go you go Buckner. Let's say you you have Tyree on the field, you release him out and put him in the slot, right? And so you have five wide basically with Buckner just back there. Then you motion um you motion Mayer inside to where he's an attached tight end. You can run the ball there. Right. Yeah. You can you can be like almost oh, a yeah. power run team with Tyler Buckner as the single as the single back there. Right. And so that, again, it's like you can't just load the box with that. And then if you put an extra in there, then that means you have a problem outside with the with the receivers. Right. And you still have Mayor who just because he's attached or or uh, um, attached offset, which means basically he's in the backfield, but based on in an attached position just because he's there doesn't mean he can't be a threat receiving the ball. So that allows them to basically take what they want from the defense, right? You put them in a, in a, in a, in a formation that you want them to be in and then you shred them that way. And that's why we showed the clips of, of Buckner in the spring game is because he's comfortable just being this, you know, a, a five wide quarterback and standing yeah. back there by himself. He did it in high school. Right. And we saw him do it in the spring game when he barely had any reps at that yeah. point. Right. Cause it's just the spring. So that's the difference between Tyler Buckner and someone like Ian book, where for whatever reason, I, you know, we don't know why they didn't want to use him in the RPO game. They didn't want to use him as an option quarterback yeah. to where it's like, you're taking multiple reads and you're 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 going to give or you're going to keep or you're going to throw throw to multiple players. They didn't do it with him. And with Buckner, they showed like that was his whole package basically. To where it's like you have a few plays and then you just go, right? You have a few plays, it's like okay, let's run them a bunch of times. You know, we showed the clip earlier from the North Carolina game. They had run that formation and that kind of play play sequence three times in a row before that. Then they took him out and they put in Cone and then they put him back in, I think, because they saw like, hey, because on the other place, Tyler was uh, Buckner was turning his back to that uh, linebacker where it's like so he can't see what the linebacker is doing. But the coach is up top saying, hey, this linebacker is cheating every single time. So they put him in a situation where they call power or a quarterback counter, sorry, where Buckner can actually see the linebacker. He takes a peek at him, pulls it has him in a bad position. He throws it to Davis for a touchdown. And that's the sort of situation where 
you know, Buckner puts teams in. And that's why I'm so excited about him because he is kind of the um, the antidote to whatever problem the defense presents. Well, now, the issue, and, though, is that yeah. he has to – one last thing. The, the issue, though, he, he has to make a lot of decisions basically on every single play. Yeah. And that's going to be where his – Pre, post, snap. Yeah, there's – it's yeah. – and – I think we saw like he made some really great decisions in, when when he was asked to do the RPO stuff because you didn't really see him make too many mistakes doing in that sense, right? You saw him make more mistakes in the drop back game, and that's where you know he, he needs to prove. But I, I mean, this is why we're friends, man. Because I I've, I was been thinking about this whole off season. I've been thinking about Tyler Buckner empty set yeah like and the problems that presents to a defense and are you really gonna are you gonna have five in the box here because if you have five in the box they're gonna run they're gonna run him they're gonna run him all day and he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna catch you and if you don't and you decide that you're gonna be outnumbered outside or you want to play cover zero or you what like notre dame has athletes they have the mares, they have Tyree, they have styles, Avery Davis, ho hopefully healthy, you know, Lindsay, they have athletes to beat you. Right. So I think really, um, you know, it's, it's going to be really interesting to kind of see the kind of what they do and, and, and how they build off of what, um, you know, he does really, really well. And I'm man, I'm excited. I'm really excited to, to, to watch him this spring. And I should mention because someone on um you know IC's message board said wanted to bring up um you know Drew Pine. And you know, does he have a shot? To yeah, sure, he has a shot. It's not it there's nothing that's you know set in stone about Tyler Buckner being the quarterback yet, right? But I think we showed from like obviously the good he did this year, and also the fact that they used him in those situations like in that virginia tech game he was the guy that yeah. they went to you know i i think the the ceiling with him is higher and that's where that's what it comes down to with pine i, I think pine doesn't have is i mean pine is accurate he's a good decision maker for the most part like he's really smart great kid um he's a good athlete too but He's not – you can't run the ball with him as a, as a primary piece the same way that, you know, it, you do with Buckner. You can't do that. Um, the offense is going to be built differently because of that, right? And mm -hmm. I, I think the upside of what they could do by building the offense with Buckner is higher. And that's really why, you know, for Pine to win the job – he just needs to be lights out. He needs to be lights out from the start of spring all the way through the summer. And, and, th and that's really the only way he can win the job because he can't do what Buckner does. And Buckner, for the most part, can do what Pine does. You know, so what Pine has to do is just be like, I'm just so much better of a passer. That's why Cone played, really, is because he was so much better. Right. And people want to bring up, and he did give a, a spark to the offense in Wisconsin and in Cincinnati. But if you look back at that Cincinnati game, I mean, he missed some reads, some key things that were there. And that's kind of why he didn't end up being the guy the rest of the way. And and I'm and I've always been a big Drew Pine believer. I'm a big fan of the kid. And I you know, I hope he makes it a, you know, a real competition, but I would think that, um, you know, Buckner's got to be the, the, by far the leader going into spring. Yeah. I, for the reasons you said, I mean, so let's just look at the fact of it, right? Like not even our basically opinion about anything. It's just the fact is, is that they had a Buckner as part of the game plan every single week that he was healthy. Right. Um, with the exception of the Fiesta Bowl, which is weird, but yeah. The point is, is like he was always a part of the game plan. Yeah. And and Pine was not. So that that just is indicative of how they felt about it. Um, and it's as you say, like 
Buckner can create offense just by his presence and his ability to hurt the defense with his legs, right? Teams aren't going to – like, so Pine, you can't put Pine in shotgun and empty sets and run with him like that, right? Like, you won't do that, and teams aren't afraid of that. So they're not going to adjust for that, right? And and they're not going to react to some of these RPO plays that we showed um, earlier – they're not going to react the same because they're not the same caliber athlete. So what Pine can do is Pine doesn't have any sort of special um, physical quality, right? That's different from like a standard, you know, division one quarterback, right? Yeah. Doesn't have a huge arm, isn't overly big, um, you know, doesn't have that elite athleticism or anything like that. He's a good passer. He throws the ball with good, very good anticipation, um, and he he understands the game, and he and he seems to understand you know the offense and that sort of thing. So if he's going to be the quarterback, his decision making and knowledge of where to go to with the ball has to be elite. It has to be elite because that's that's what would take him over the top of someone like Buckner, right? You, you're gonna. You're asking the the offense to basically eschew all of the physical capabilities and what Buckner can bring in lieu of what Pine can bring. So it has to whatever he's doing, it has to be a lot better than what Tyler is. And and part of the problem with Pine and why why they were hesitant to go with him is because he didn't always go to the right spot when he was, when he was passing the ball against Cincinnati and against Wisconsin. Right. Yeah. Obviously he played well, but you do have to, he does have to be an elite decision maker. Um, if he is going to win the job and take that away from, um, Tyler Buckner, yep, not saying he can't, right. He will get his chance, but that's what has to happen. And the odds of, you know, the odds of him taking that leap, just aren't very good because you know that's just how it works right like the the chances that the chances are it's not um it's it's not likely yeah um all right well let's get into uh some questions here um let me get this one here okay from matthew patterson um you talked about buckner in a five wide in a five wide in the issues how do you think he will fare with 21 or 22 personnel well, they ran a ton of 21 and 22 with them this year. So, I mean, that Tyree touchdown that we showed, that was 22. Um, you know, the the play that Tyree, the bobble play, I believe that was 21. Um, that's kind of what they did with, yeah. with him a lot. And you know, what they did in, you know, the Virginia Tech game, I think people remember they, you know, they ran that kind of like counter cross buck play out of it. They, yeah, I think they're going to run that a ton with him, actually, right? Like, that's going to be something that uh, teams are going to have to deal with. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's probably going to be one of the stronger things we see from uh, Notre Dame. And I think a lot of it's going to be based on opponent, right? And what they're, you know, how these teams handle it. And I think you're going to see some different stuff from week to week. But I think that's the fun part about it is that Buckner offers more diversity in the run game of kind of what they can do. Yeah. They can run their kind of like, you know, base plays, but they're going to be able to do a lot more too and get a lot more creative with that too. Like we didn't even really see like, you know, speed option stuff or, right. or any of that kind of stuff. And, and I think that's going to be out there. That's definitely going to be out there. Some like speed option with like, you know, shovel inside with the two back, like, they're gonna they're gonna have that so um yeah i think it, it would end up being great you know with because they've already shown it right it's not just a power so like in 22 right it's not just a power formation anymore because of buckner and the, how he can get outside and so that's where like so you look at a formation like that with jack Cohn or something like that and it's like okay the focus is only on the power aspect whereas you can still get outside and be dynamic because of what um, Tyler Buckner can do. Um, good. Um, before we get on to the next question, because I, I you don't have to throw this one up there, but my my guy Cordell 
from ISD, you know, my thoughts on Bonnie McMurray. Anyone watch Letter Kenny out there? I got to say, and this, this is just for you, Cordell. I mean, she's pretty spicy. That's all I'll say. Bonnie McMurray. She's pretty <laughs> spicy. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. All right. I, honestly, I didn't know what that was. So I was, I was going to. No, it's from, it, it's but... from Letter Kenny. It's, uh, I think it's on Hulu in, in, in oh, okay. the US. So if anyone wants all to right. check it out, but it's based on like a small, uh, hick. They call themselves the Hicks um, town in, in, in uh, Canada. And it's, it's a hilarious show. All right. Um, Robert uh, Nishihira, uh, in an emergency, who is your more likely to play quarterback, Avery Davis or Ron Paulus? I mean, I haven't really seen Ron Paulus take a snap in practice. Um, I, mean, I mean, obviously he must have, you know, he must have done some scout team stuff this year. I mean, if not, then why are they giving him a scholarship? So, yeah. Um, my guess is probably Avery Davis because he's knows the offense and to run the offense. And I think Paulus maybe, maybe in a year from now, maybe that he would be more of the emergency quarterback, but, um, let's say Steve Angeli the third quarterback this year, which I think probably likely he's probably going to beat out Ron Paulus uh, yeah. for that job. So if that's the case, man and they're getting down to the fourth guy um i would think you know maybe you'll see paulus but i i would probably lean towards avery davis i would lean toward avery davis too because you can still you can do you know read read zone stuff yeah zone read stuff you can do that right it, you just, and you some know. of the stuff that buckner does so it's kind of right, like right it, actually yeah yeah like avery i mean i bet in a pinch he could he could Throw those every day was darn good quarterback in yeah. high school really good really yeah. good quarterback i like them um um let's see we can just this is kind of a comment more than anything we reached out to keaton slovis where were we trying to make buckner sit again with jackson arnold off the table we better get dante more um i think i think we could maybe just kind of touch on uh the jackson arnold dante Moore thing like quarterback recruiting um just for a second um, um how do you how do you feel about that okay first with the keaton slovis thing they reached out to him but they didn't pursue him like they didn't so it wasn't like um and i think that's part of the reason why they were like they're kind of betting on buckner yeah right they're kind of betting on buckner and you know and it's something that uh you know matt freeman has said too that they should look at how things go in the spring and if things don't go good in the spring there's probably a quarterback out there they could probably go and get if they really need to get somebody if they don't like what they see from Buckner or Pine or whatever. So um, that's something they can do, but yeah, it wasn't something they're They feel pretty good about Buckner and Pine and they don't want to, they don't want to screw anything up there. And that's why it never became more than contact. So, um, and then with, with Jackson Arnold, um, man, I mean, Notre Dame would have taken him in a heartbeat for sure. They really yeah. liked him. Um, so, you know, that definitely anyone saying that, that, yeah, they want to take him. That's false. Um, I mean, they better get Dante Moore. I mean, obviously you want to get Dante Moore. He's a stud. I, I think it would be a great pickup. Uh, at the same time, you know, what you got to kind of see how it plays out. Like everybody wants to jump all over Reese and say, man, he's doing a terrible job. How come he can't get a quarterback? It's like, well, these guys aren't committed yet other than Arnold. Arnold just committed. So, and, you know, one of the reasons that he committed to Oklahoma is because Jeff Levy came from Ole Miss. Well, Levy was one of the first guys to offer him at Ole Miss. So they had that prior relationship and all that. And he probably already liked Oklahoma before that. So that had a lot to do with it. So, um, and you know what, when you're, you're playing big boy football, we talk about it with some of the other recruits they're after, where well, you're going after Dante Moore. It's like, well, you got to win it. You're not, you're not, he's not just going to fall into their lap. They got to win it. So. We'll see what happens, but I, I mean, I like some of the other quarterbacks that are, that are still out there too. So, uh, but we'll see. Definitely, he's would be the top guy uh, for me left out, out of the guys that they're under consideration for. Yeah, and I think that you know, for me, I, Tommy Reese, the the recruiter, is is in my opinion. I mean, obviously, right? Like he he has his he has his targets that he wants to get right. So go get your targets as far you know. That's just it. Like you, you have your top guys. Go get your top guys. It's similar to, um, like Marcus Freeman, defensive coordinator, right? We know who your top group is at this point. 
you know, Matt's given us four names on the, um, the ISD message board. So go get them, right? That's what you need to do. But as far as like, for, for, for me, Reese, your, your recruiting pitch is tied to Tyler Buckner. Like you need to, Tyler Buckner needs to be like a very good football player. That's going to help them recruit the, yeah, the next that, one. That's yeah. the key, right? Ironically, Lincoln, that's what, yeah. yeah. Like Lincoln Riley is, is who he is because Baker, Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen hurts. Like that's what's, that's why Spencer Rattler went there. That's why right. Caleb Williams went there. That's exactly why. Because if you look at the quarterbacks before that, they were like the level of four-star guys that um, Notre Dame was landing. Right. And even then, too, Mayfield was a transfer. Murray yeah. was a transfer, right? So maybe Notre Dame needs to dip into the transfer thing. Uh, maybe that is. But, I mean, I wouldn't say – I thought didn't think Slovis was going to be Kyler Murray or anything like that. But um, – Maybe that is something that they need to do at, at some point. But really, if you think about it too, Deshaun Watson, um, you know, took Clemson to another level, and that's what helped them land Trevor Lawrence. Right. And right. Trevor Lawrence helped them land DJ Longale and and so on and so forth. And Kate Klobnik and all that. That's why. And it, it's a, like a weird way because it's like, yeah, you'd say these guys are pass or block, but it's like, why does Ohio State get all these guys? Well, look at the guys they put in the league. Look what they've done. Why does Ohio State always sign these top DBs and top receivers? Look at the guys they put in the league. That matters. Right. It matters. Right. Why Why do you think Notre Dame always sells O-line U, tight end U? Well, they put all these guys in the league who are really good players, right? So right. that helps. It helps a lot. You think, you think Notre Dame would have recruited as well the last two cycles without that? So, I mean, I, I, Jeff Quinn did a really good job, you know, uh, with recruiting. He did a really good job. But I mean, it doesn't happen if Harry C. Sand didn't develop those other guys into, you know, top picks. That doesn't just, happen, right? They're yeah. just predisposed. Yeah, I mean, it, it, all the way back to Joe Moore, right? When when you had, you know, the way Notre Dame was running the ball in the '80s, right? Yeah. And Aaron Taylor and Tim Ruddy and you know uh, Ryan Leahy and all those guys, like all those guys, they're all good. And so you just think Notre Dame offensive line, like you always think that. And so right now, it's. You, you think Notre Dame, you don't think quarterback play. You yeah. did a good job with Ian Book. You, you did. Like, he was a mid-three-star, and now he's a fourth-round pick. That's good. Yeah. Fourth-round pick is not a first-round pick. Yeah. Right? Deshaun Kaiser, low four-star, second-round pick. That's good. Right? That's good development, but it's not a first-round pick. Right? You have other coaches who are taking guys like Mac Jones, turning them into first-round pick. Baker Mayfield. First round pick, Jalen Hurts, second round pick, right? He was yeah. he was basically discarded by Alabama, Jalen Hurts was. Yeah. He goes to Oklahoma, he he almost wins a Heisman trophy, right? So it's just like you're winning Heismans at other schools. And like that's what Tommy Reese needs. He needs Tom Tyler Buckner to be a star. That's what yeah. he needs, right? He can sell all he wants. And but if if you're not creating stars, then that's the thing. Michael Mayer is a star. Yeah. And so other tight ends. Oh, and they're they going to use him to recruit the next guy. And, and that's just how it is. Like, yeah, I want to come. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's exa exactly because, and, and you, you literally will show film. This is how we're going to use you. Just like Michael Mayer. This yeah. is what you're going to do. Just like this guy. That's, I'm, and people wonder about, you know, running back. It's like, man, there's so much opportunity. Like before wh when they couldn't get Shipley. Right. And, you know, they didn't land Shipley. I'm like, I don't understand why he doesn't come like, well, they just had Travis Etienne and Notre Dame had like Josh Adams was great back. Dexter Williams was great back. Well, one guy's undrafted and another guy's a six round pick. That's right. a difference between like they look at that. People look at that that's kind of stuff. The deal. Yeah. That's why you need like Kyron Williams. Like he needs to not just be a high pick, but like be good in the NFL. Right. Like that helps. That helps a lot. Right. Um, just this last one. From Nick Davis, I'm curious why more aren't high on Pine. He's shown um, very high level quarterback play, ultimate point guard. It's not that we're not high on him. Like, is uh, it my highness on him? Is basically, you know, we have a bunch more clips of Buckner doing things in games because they put him in the game more, and because he's more dynamic player. That's just true. Okay. Yeah. 
it's not to say that I don't think Drew Pine can do it. That's that's not me. The 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 point is is that Notre Dame has put Buckner in games in almost all of the games, and that wasn't the case with Pine. And the you know breaking down his game is just the fact of the matter that he's not very big, he doesn't have great athleticism, and he doesn't have a big arm. That's just true. So in order to overcome those things he needs to be an elite decision maker he needs to be very accurate right yeah. that's what he needs to be and i mean elite because we're talking about buckner becoming elite right yeah. that's what we're talking about so we're talking about elite quarterback play right so that's where pine needs to get so that's all like and and if and if they're both playing at elite level it's probably going to be buckner because he hurt the he hurts the defense in more ways than pine does that's all. yeah and, you know, and I think the thing with Pine, um, and I mean, let me just add to, he did such a fantastic job in that Wisconsin game when he came in. And I mean, I, I man, I think there's so many things about him that he has the mentality to be yeah. a great player and um, all that. But it, like exactly what you said, he needs like elite mind, elite accuracy, all this kind of stuff needs to be there. Um or else then he's basically like, I, I think everybody complained about Ian book. And even though like he won a ton of games, but they're like, man, he's not a lead at anything. Right. He's a really good athlete, but man, look at him. Like miss this read. miss this there. So in order for, or people compare Ian book to Drew Brees, but it's like anyone who watched Notre Dame games knows that like Ian book was not Drew Brees. He's never going to be Drew Brees. No. Like he never showed any of that. Right. And Drew Pine, maybe he could be Drew Brees. We haven't seen enough of him, but I, you know, from practices and 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 all that too. Like, maybe he could be that, but we haven't seen enough to say that, you know, he's going to be that guy, right? Like, you just don't know. And the other thing is too is that, um, he, I think that the, the part of the running part of it. I mean, that's a big part. It's, it's a, a big, big, big part. So, yeah. um, and it's just not it's not there in the same way. I think he can escape the pocket and do some nice things, but he's not going to be a big part of the running game. Even if they tried to make him, and you say, Oh, he's a good athlete. He can do this. I mean, the diff like Tyler Buckner, like trucks some dudes on some runs. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to see that. If Drew, if Drew Pine tried that, he's probably going to get hurt. Right. Like that's just his body type. So um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not like, I, I'm not saying it's like 99% Buckner is going to win the job because I mean, we'll see what happens, but there's obviously a reason why if Buckner didn't play and the coaches didn't show the, all this favor to Buckner during the thing, then we'd be doing this on Drew Pine instead. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, the writing's on the wall, what they want. It, it's not yeah. me. I don't, it's not my choice. Like I didn't it's just, they're yeah. playing Buckner for a reason. Um. All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, we'll keep trying to do um, these kind of things going forward, hopefully with the live stuff. Great job by Greg on the video. Um, I think, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with, because I think DC, I think it's going to happen like maybe later this week, maybe like at, early next week. I mean, you never know. Sometimes you think it's going to happen. It's not. Running back coach, we'll see. Um, you know, and if that kind of stuff happens, maybe we'll do another live one just to comment on or whatever, but we'll see what happens. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in and, uh, we'll see you next time.